Hey guys, what's up? Shadowlands back with another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to speed up combat arms specifically, although these tips can also be used to speed up pretty much any game. It's going to speed up your computer in general, um, even if you're not playing games, and it will certainly help for other games as well. This is just the list of things I'm going to be going over, and some links that I'll post in the description that'll probably help you guys out. So, without any further ado, let's dive right in. So first of all, Razor Game Booster to defrag the combat arms folder. Now, as you guys may know, and as they posted on the forums, using this while you're playing the game can very easily result in a ban and if they detect that it's been used on your files as a booster because it actually will change a few small files here and there tell some things not to run and so on then they will know that you've used it or so on when you update your game that's the only way they get the data for that but if you just use it to defrag the folder you're totally fine and that's what we're going to do because that's actually one of the biggest things you can do to make the game run faster now I already have it installed so I'm just going to open it up here. It's a very, very simple download. The link is going to be provided in the description. Also, it's right here if you guys see that. Uh, Razorzone.com slash GameBooster. So that's that. I'm going to go over here to Tools, and I'm going to go over here to Defrag. Now, you should have a lot of games installed, probably a lot of useless things like your Windows games. Look for Combat Arms. It always comes up here, and I didn't have to install anything weird. It just came up. So then you're just going to click Defrag on the folder. Now, I have not defragged it in a very, very long time. And also, it was probably new before the last time I defragged it. So this can take anywhere between 2 or 3 minutes or 45 minutes, depending on the last time you did it. And it would take a metric crap ton of time for me, so I don't want to do that right now and waste your time. Also, the Diagnose tool is very, very useful. If you are actually pretty experienced with computers, I can tell you if there's a directory issue or so on. And I'm going to get to that next, because I have another way for you guys to fix those kind of issues. You wouldn't want to use Game Booster on that. Now, for any other game, if you just click launch, it will just shut down some processes and make your computer run a little bit faster. Granted, on the computer I'm running on now, I wouldn't be able to show you any performance differences because this computer is, well, a supercomputer, so that wouldn't be very helpful. Next up, I wanted to show you guys something called CC Cleaner. You get it by Piriform.com. There is a link right here, and I'm actually going to open this one up and show it to you because it's a little more confusing than the Game Booster one. I'm going to go ahead and open this up here. You just click on this download link right here and you're going to see three different versions. The Professional Plus is not very useful. Um, it doesn't give you a lot more than you really need to. It's just file recovery and hardware analysis, but you have other tools already installed on your computer for that, so this version that gives you these three extra things is not useful. You can get the free version if you want, but it doesn't have a lot of cool things on it. Uh, you're better off getting the Professional and the free trial, and then anytime you have to re-download it, I think it's a 14-day trial, uh, just go through your internet browser cookies and then just give it a new email every single time if you really need it. The thing is, you really only need to download this maybe, I don't know, three or four times a year to actually do this. I wouldn't do it every week or so. It's not necessary. So when you download that, you're going to get this thing right here. Go through the setup process, and it will give you CC Cleaner. Now, here's how you use this. You go to your registry. You check everything here, and you click Scan for Issues. Now, once again, this is going to take a very long time, so I'm not going to do it. I would expect at most maybe two hours. Uh, this depends on how big your computer is and all that kind of stuff you got. So it's not going to be super useful to do it like that. Um, next, so also that will actually cover registry cleaning and defragging. Previously I was using another thing called uh, AVG or AVZ, something like that, I don't know, uh, PC tune-up, and it did this stuff for me, but it did it separately. The CC cleaner will do it all together, which is really nice. So Next up is disk defrag. Now any Windows computer has this already installed if you are running Windows 2000+, Plus, I believe. So assuming that you're playing Combat Arms in the first place, you should have this. You're going to come down to your search bar and you're going to type in disk defrag and you're going to come up with this thing called Disk Defragmenter right here. Now, as you can see, I am 16% fragmented because this thing's been running servers for a long time. Servers make it go, you know, crazy. So what you're going to do is you're going to select each of them uh, using a Boolean, and the way you do that is that you hold Control, and you click both of them. And then you're going to say Defragment Disks right here. This is going to be the longest process you will ever experience in your entire life. It can take well over a day, so I would suggest you do it overnight. It will not actually harm your usage of your computer at all, so you can play Combat Arms even while it's going, but I do not suggest you do that. Now, the reason that we did the Game Booster Defrag at the beginning is because it specifically targets one folder and puts all of its resources into that. This defragmenter just comes with the computer. It's a general defrag of your operating system and anything that's going wrong, so that will cover that, but it won't cover anything specifically the way that Game Booster will appear, which is why we do it separately. And like I said, the disk defrag comes pre-installed. Not too worried about it. Now, here is allocating more RAM to your graphics card and also to general system performance. Now, this is not going to be... I'm not going to show you my graphics card and how to allocate it directly to it because everyone has a different graphics card and there's a different way to do it for every graphics card, but I'm going to show you how to improve your general system performance with it. You're going to come to your computer wherever you have it. My computer also works. And right-click it and go to Properties. 
you're going to be given this whole thing right here and you're going to go on to advanced system settings and then you're going to be coming down to performance right here settings and then you can choose to go for best performance or best appearance best appearance is going to make your computer run very very slowly and best performance is going to make it run pretty quickly but not much faster than it already is so it's usually best to let windows choose it however we're going to go to the advanced tab first of all make sure that it is set to programs and not background services for some reason when mine was installed it was already set to background services i have no idea why but it was but the big thing we're coming down to is virtual memory right here and change we're going to see how windows can allocate that ram and we're not going to automatically page it we're going to come down here and do a custom size Now, what you want to do is set your maximum size to this number right here the space available Now, I'm not actually going to do that because I actually do have a special background system that runs and does this but you're going to set the maximum size to this number right here and the initial size to this minimum right here this minimum right here and you also have a currently allocated amount that's how much my computer is storing but that way you have a, ma a massive range and your computer will draw from it only as much as it needs which is really good now if you start running a ton of video renders at once that can actually crash your computer I don't suggest you still render like five videos at once that's still going to cause your computer to crash but if you were rendering one video or two videos at a time it will make it run way faster or if you're playing combat arms it will make it so that your general movement through the game and the UI uh, the user interface all the shops and stuff outside of game it will make it run much smoother and also it could increase your FPS just by a little bit but I'm gonna leave it on automatic for myself because that's what I need and I have some background services that help run that so adding more physical RAM with USD and SD cards now this is something I can't actually show you fully but I can show you a bit Here's what you're mostly going to be doing and what it should look like. I'm going to come down here and show you guys something called Ready Boost. And you want to click this thing right here. This is how to speed up your computer right here. Now, I can't do this because I don't have an SD card on me that will actually allow me to do this. However, most SD cards actually will. I have some special ones that are designed and protected, so I can't actually use them. But you're going to do something like this. I'm going to show you now. I'm going to plug in an SD card to my computer. And it should come up in a second. Here we go. Continuing without scanning. And I'm going to go... I don't need this actually, I'm going to come over here to computer, I'm going to right click it and say properties, X this out, and then we're coming over here to this tab called Ready Boost. Now I can't use it, but this is what would normally come up over here, and what you would want to do is completely empty your USB or your SD card completely first, nothing on it at all, completely wiped. Then you're going to come down here and say dedicate this device to Ready Boost, because otherwise you'll have to say use this device and set the maximum amount you can because you already have other stuff on it. Now if you other have other stuff on it as well, if you already do, it's going to even bog it down even more and make it even less useful. But you want to make it de uh, completely dedicated to Ready Boost. Usually a 2 gigabyte card is good for this, uh, a 4 gigabyte works too. 8 gigabyte is a bit excessive because the more memory you give it to use as RAM, the less useful that extra RAM actually becomes over time. It's kind of like a debilitating utility sort of thing right there. So that's that that's ready boost and that's if you are kind of low on ram so if you have a low ram computer which a lot of people with laptops particularly have uh, that's something you might want to look into especially if you have an sd card slot i wouldn't use up one of your usb slots for that but you can next up is changing your dns servers now this is something i guarantee most of you have not done and this is where something you really need to pay attention to so we're going to come over here to control panel and we're going to go to network and internet and we're going to go to i believe it's networking tasks here or it's one of these tabs. Let me find it up here. Here we go. Properties. All this stuff. I need to find where they had the adapters here. Or... And this is kind of strange. Oh, there we go. I hate this new control panel thing. It looks really weird. Anyway, so we're going to come here and go to properties. This is the one that I primarily use. And in this case, I actually have two adapters. But we're going to come down here to this Internet Protocol version 4 TCP IPv4. You're going to right-click this and click Properties. And I have automatically DHCP stuff here, so I don't have anything here. But you want to say, not in, instead of obtaining DNS server automatically, it's going to be set to this by default. Use the following DNS server addresses. This is Google. It's free, but it's Google, and it's extremely fast. You want to put 8888 as your preferred, specifically, and 8844 as your alternate. And uh, you're going to have to restart your computer after this, but that's what you're going to want to do. And finally, the last couple of things I can tell you, and this is something I'm not going to show you specifically, but it's something you should do. In your in-game settings, you'll find something under your graphics settings called anti-aliasing. For some reason, when you start up the game, it's already set to like eight times or four times or something that's not zero times. I don't know why that is by default, but it is. 
set it to zero times. This is going to make your FPS rise like a beast. It's going to go up a lot, especially if you already had it on something very, very high. If you had it on maximum settings, then you're going to notice quite a big difference. Uh, at least depending on how good your computer is. And finally, restart your computer before playing. Now, I'm actually going to run and uninstall a lot of this stuff because it's not necessary for me, but for anyone who's looking to speed up the game, this is a great way to do it, and I highly suggest you guys get some of this stuff. I will be doing another tips and tricks video on networking uh, tips besides just this changing your DNS servers, so if you have slow internet, you can speed it up that way. That's just all I have for today, though, guys. It's kind of a long video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Shadowlands out.